A little over 8 months ago, I got my first mechanical keyboard accompanied with a very rare mouse after using a stock standard membrane keyboard and a mouse for as long as I can remember and boy, have they raised some eyebrows. I mean, just look at all these comments. So since a lot of you have been asking what it's been like using them for the last 8 months, I thought to myself, I might as well give you guys a long term review. So buckle up and let's go for the ride. Design wise, it's been an absolute marvel to look at. Predominantly made with a walnut stained wood chassis, I like how it perfectly ties to the table of my desk. Going into detail, it comes with additional accessories starting with this riveted cylinder on the left which I use to store my pens, pencils and other miscellaneous items. In the middle, there's this crank that I've been using to turn on the dimmable lights which helps set the perfect ambience especially when working at night. At the very end, I've got this rustic clock that acts as an additional timepiece with a bit of that retro element. The rounded keycaps have a brass outer ring and a slight divot to them which allows my fingers to fit in perfectly. Speaking of keycaps, I know you guys are keen to know the switches that lie underneath but more on that in just a bit. Going into connectivity, connection to my M1 Mac Mini has been seamless and I haven't experienced any input lag since switching from my Apple Magic Keyboard. The only thing I wish was a bit different is the wireless option but in saying that, with just one cable connected to my Carl Digit TS3 dock, the cable is barely noticeable. Moving along, when it comes to switches, I chose to go with our Temu Blue switches which are clicky and writing my scripts the last 8 months has been super enjoyable. Here's a sound test. Something to note though, they sit on the noisier side and if you got workmates or housemates who don't like the clicky sound, I'd suggest going for something like the Ghetto Red Black switches which are tactile and have no feedback. Pretty much the same as what you'd get on a membrane keyboard. For an in-depth look at switches, I'll leave a link of the original review in the description box. And while on the subject of switches, we might as well touch on the actuation of the keys. Just in case you don't know what actuation is, actuation is basically how hard you have to press the key for it to get registered. In the case of this keyboard, the Outemu Blue switches have an actuation force of about 60 grams and a bottom out force of the same amount, which is ideal for someone like me with normal typing habits. Again, in case you don't know what bottoming out is, it's basically when the keys are pushed all the way down. Another important aspect to talk about with regards to actuation would be travel, which refers to the distance the keys have to be pushed down before the key press is registered. In the case of these Outemu Blue switches, the travel distance is about 4mm, while the actuation force is the usual 2mm, and over the last 8 months, they've stayed smooth even though they only got lube during the keyboard build. Speaking of lubing, because of the design of the keyboard, the keys are not hot swappable and any changes would require me to open the entire chassis. Moving along, since we've been talking about keys, we might as well talk about the keyboard layout. Just a quick recap on keyboard layouts. For those who don't know, keyboards do come in a variety of sizes that contain different numbers of keys and in the keyboard world, you'll hear percentages being used to refer to the size of the keyboard. In the case of this keyboard, it's got a 100% layout with 104 keys which has been fantastic and super convenient putting in mind I switched from an Apple Magic keyboard that has a 75% layout. To make it simpler, 100% layout means the keyboard has all the essential keys plus a numeric keypad, whereas a 75% layout has all the essential keys minus the keypad. Ergonomics being an important part of any desk setup, this wrist rest has been super clutch over the last 8 months. Made from solid hardwood and standing walnut, it continues with the woody theme of my setup. At the heart of it sits a foam padding upholstered in supple vegetable tan leather that has these triangular patterns which add an interesting design element. I also like how the wooden chassis that's got a bit of a dome shape to it breaks the straight line pattern which is predominant in my setup. Moving along, we obviously can't talk about a keyboard without mentioning the accessory that goes hand in hand with it. Enter my Steampunk mouse. For the longest time, I've been a fan of the MX Master series line but just for aesthetic purposes, I put my MX Master 3 on ice for a little bit just to enjoy the visual appeal of this rare looking mouse. Its components mainly sit on a wooden chassis with the palm rests upholstered in vegetable tan leather. The right and left clickers are made out of aluminum rod and the scroll wheel is carved out of bronze which flows well with the gold on the screws. Besides its main function of cutting through workflows, I like how well it ties to my steampunk keyboard and adds that visual interest which is a spectacle for the senses. Judging from the inquiries I've been getting from all your comments, some of you would be keen to grab one for yourselves. 
Now, being a novelty product, it's obviously going to sit on the premium budget end of the market. And when it comes to the number of people that are interested in mechanical keyboards, let alone antique looking Neo Victorian inspired keyboards, many would assume it would be on the lower side, but these comments say otherwise. For those who happen to be the initial people interested in these types of keyboards, you might be dissuaded by the price. After all, this is a niche product and the business strategy of selling niche products that don't move a whole lot of inventory is to sell them at a higher price to help cover the cost of production. That higher price in this case is a whooping 1,365 Australian dollars which is roughly 897 American dollars. Ouch! I know, right? I can see your reaction and there's no way you can justify spending $1,000 on a keyboard but then again, that's why niche products are synonymous with high price tags and if you're a bit of a hipster and design enthusiast like me, this one's definitely for you despite the higher price tag. All in all, besides its main function of writing up scripts and editing my videos, not only is it a cool novelty, but it also adds the much needed visual appeal to any setup. This would specifically resonate with literary enthusiasts who are hardcore typists or somebody who just wants a collectible for the edges. In saying that there are a lot of budget options for as low as $40 and you can always go for one that suits you and best fits your budget. Speaking of fitting your budget, this excess smart wallet perfectly does that and when you factor in there's an additional 35% off with the code Brian, you'd be getting the absolute bang for your buck. Made from space grade aluminum, this smart wallet can carry up to 8 cards thanks to the expandable backplate and with just a press you can easily access your cards and it doesn't stop there. There's a host of accessories you can get from laptop sleeves, key trackers, key organizers, multi-tool kits, just to name but a few. Use the link in the description below and code Brian at checkout to get 35% off on your next order. For full disclosure, I get a small commission and that helps support my small channel. Thank you in advance. These are my final thoughts. After using it for a little over 8 months, I can confidently say it's been worth every penny. It continues to work properly and the key travel in tandem with the clicky sound have been so satisfying when writing my scripts. Design was an absolute retro masterpiece reborn with modern innovation that not only adds the visual interest to my setup, but also the perfect productivity machine for it. If you've got to this point of the video and you found it helpful and enjoyable, leave a thumbs up in the comment section and don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see other home office accessories that go well with this keyboard, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out, see you on the next one.